Good evening, everyone. I'm Carolyn Hall, the Chief Executive of the Maloon Institute. We're a non-for-profit working to repair and rehydrate landscapes across Australia. And I wanted to thank the Royal Societies Australia for having us on the Stewardship of Country webinar this evening. Tonight, I want to talk to you a little bit about the Maloon Institute and what we do. Um, and I want to use our catchment scale project, the Maloon Rehydration Initiative at Maloon, uh, just east of Canberra, as a case study to explore the gaps in the transfer of knowledge between those on the ground and those developing policy. And just explore a little bit about um, how we might better bridge that gap and, and what we've learned at Maloon. I want to explore some of the challenges, how we might make some better connections, how we might drive some innovation in policy and practice, and how we can make better connections for resilience. I think we all acknowledge that there's an immense body of knowledge held by landholders and land managers that just doesn't seem to break through and resonate with the political class. At the Maloon Institute, we've tried to remedy this situation with our very practical hands-on approach. And that's a little bit about what I want to walk you through this evening. Who are we? Uh, we're Australia's premier scientific organisation on landscape rehydration. Our work focuses on capturing and retaining water in the landscape. More moisture in our soils means more ground cover, means less evaporation, results in the re-establishment of water cycles and therefore facilitates more carbon in the soil which results in more water held in the soil. And so the cycle continues. We're a non-for-profit organisation. And as I said, we carry out landscape repair and rehydration of catchments. We like to share our regenerative land management practices, monitor the outcomes and educate farmers and land managers on these practices. We have our own commercial operation covering two and a half thousand hectares that acts as a demonstrator. We want to show farmers how they can be more resilient to drought, flood and bushfire, and how our work, our work is helping to moderate climatic extremes. A little later, I'll show you some before and after photos that really um, make the results of our work clear. Our mission and goals are unashamedly ambition, ambitious. What we do is actually fairly simple and straightforward, but it's backed by some serious science and some technical design and it has some great outcomes. We've got a close connection to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals in that we are one of only five global organisations selected by the United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network, it's a bit of a mouthful, to demonstrate how environmental repair can improve agricultural outcomes. The MRI itself, our catchment scale project, is a great on-ground example of landscape rehydration and restoration at the catchment scale. We see this project as a model that can be scaled up and applied in catchments across Australia and even possibly internationally. The project is also a great way to reach almost every member of civil society and lots of politicians and begin to build a bridge of understanding of what can be done in a practical sense to repair landscapes, but how sometimes also regulatory and policy frameworks can actually create obstacles to be overcome rather than opportunities to be realised. The project itself covers 23,000 hectares and includes 20 landholders. It also supports a range of long-term hydrological and environmental monitoring sites. And some of those you might just be able to make out on that map. At its core, the MRI is a research project. It's overseen by the advisory committee with a number of important research themes. I now want to run you quickly through those photos I mentioned to give you a real sense of this project and what people see when they come to Maloon. The project involves, among other things, the construction of leaky weirs that are soft engineered eco-structures. They trigger landscape regeneration and become part of the stream system. They're designed to raise the water level, to rehydrate the floodplain and to rebuild aquatic habitat. We're essentially rebuilding wetlands in the system that slow the water but also restore habitat for a range of species native to the area and endangered in Australia. As I said, the leaky weirs slow the water, they encourage sediment to deposit, building the bed of the stream, making it easier for flows to overtop the banks and recharge local aquifers. Improved water retention on the floodplain improves soil and increases soil carbon levels, 
encouraging vegetation to flourish and increasing the productivity of farming land. Water is released slowly over time, building resilience to drought and to bushfire. This slide shows the construction of a rock and log leaky weir, but really once those leaky weirs are established, it's the vegetation that does the hard work and makes these living structures in the landscape. This slide is around 12 months after construction. So you see that they settle in really rather well. I don't want you to think that our work is confined to the riparian area or the stream, the streams. We do lots of work also higher up in the system. And this is a this is a contour that shows how we slow water high up in the system. And when we plant vegetation on the down slope contour, that can help fertility be more evenly distributed with the aid of gravity. The findings on the MRI have been very positive. Monitoring has demonstrated improved and sustained water flow and quality that comes from water banked in the floodplain. Important in this case is the MRI is located in Sydney's drinking water catchment. Gains have also been realised in farm productivity and biodiversity. So here we've got an outstanding example of practice in that the MRI brings agriculture and the environment together and it's based on research. What drives good policy? What comes first, policy, practice or research? We know that agricultural land systems are complex systems with many interactions of social and environmental domains across time and space. Very difficult for policy to grapple with in an environment where decisions are made on needs, desires or immediate problems rather than holistic decision making. Really, Taking account of environmental, social and economic consequences, it's all very hard work for politicians who really need simple, clear messages that win hearts and minds and votes and budget allocations. For us, demonstration of good practice, MRI has put practice first, driven by a problem faced by farmers, a broken water cycle that's resulted in eroded creeks, dried out floodplains and less productive land. It has shown that a relatively simple solution to a complex problem that can achieve increased agricultural production, many environmental co-benefits, and there is inherently a social project process with 20 landholders agreeing to creek interventions and learning and practising improved land management. But that is not enough. It must be promoted by politicians and policy makers. And who has that skill? At the Maloon Institute, our chairman, Gary Nan A.O., was the member for Eden Monaro for 11 years. He brought the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, the Ag Minister, and the then Se Senator Jim Molan to, McCreek, to Maloon's Creek in 2018. Since then, we've had the Honourable Shane Stone, Commissioner for the National Drought and Flood Recovery Agency, and more recently, we've even had His Excellency David Hurley, the Governor General, come to visit. We're seeing a paradigm shift to regenerative agriculture, issues like soil organic carbon and the hope it holds to address climate change may be one of the key drivers. What are some of the challenges though? Time, it takes a long time. Works began at Maloon Creek back in 2006. Here we are over 10 years later and we're still really just gaining that strong profile in Canberra. We've required relentless advocacy work while our founder, Tony Coote, was alive, and now with Gary Nan, our chairman, there is possibly nobody that they haven't spoken to in Canberra about our work. Quite sadly, recently, the drought, the bushfires, the floods, and even the pandemic have focused politicians on the solutions. The proximity to Canberra of Maloon Creek has possibly helped as well. But connections for resilience can also come from unlikely sources. We've now got a Maloon Law Committee with a New South Wales and a Queensland chapter. Matt Edgett and Warburton approached us after a visit to Maloon and was really keen to kick off the Maloon Law Committee and see what they could do. We've since, back in early 2020, before COVID, it feels like a lifetime ago, uh, briefed the New South Wales Planning Minister and the New South Wales Water Minister. And we're actually progressing reforms to legislation. So we're hoping that there's going to be a consistent approach to consideration of landscape rehydration in regulated parts of the system across the state. What we've learned is that fixing our broken water cycles can have a major impact. 
we know that philanthropy has made the Maloon Rehydration Initiative possible. It's showcased an innovative approach that can have major national benefits, and this appeals quite clearly to the political class, but that it's required relentless and informed advocacy work. And that really, it's coincided with a bit of a paradigm shift, this realisation that regenerative agriculture in Australia has a part to play in addressing climate change and a whole lot of environmental problems. So what do we see as opportunities to drive innovation in policy and practice? Clearly, we believe that responding to a real world problem is key. We know that sometimes policy is driven by research agendas and they can actually get in the way. We know that sharing knowledge is really important and we do that in the MRI, the landholders, but also with bringing the community along. We invite others to come to Maloon and learn about what we're doing. We also host very applied courses for landholders so that they can learn about landscape rehydration and gain skills and know what to do on their own properties. What else have we learned? That good policy is driven not only from the bottom up by landholders and those concerned with change, but also from the top down by politicians who understand what's happening. Landholders and politicians coming together at the right time to achieve change, it's pretty rare. But we believe practical on ground examples in land management can at least get that conversation started. But we need to do more. We've got to link these examples of practice. We've got to link this good policy also to funding if we're going to get these things off the ground. What are our next steps? Really, we've got to ask our government to step up, to not just see those great examples on the ground, but to take the opportunity to fund innovative solutions and fund them at scale, to make those connections between regenerative practices, to drought resilience and to carbon sequestration, and then to link those to really current and obvious funding opportunities like the Futures Drought Fund and the Emissions Reduction Fund. We want to see innovation driven by responding to real world problems. We want to support practice change with more examples like the Maloon Rehydration Initiative across Australia in a variety of settings. We want to review regulations like we're seeing our Maloon Law Committee do. We want to show and tell politicians, but we also want to be clear about asking for funds to scale these projects up. We want to make those connections for resilience wherever we can. I want to thank you all for your time today. Please don't hesitate to connect with us online. And I hope that we've inspired a little bit of hope about what we can achieve moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.